uh, Booktree. Uh, today I'm going to be giving you my um, review of Some Dreams by Pippa uh, Lee Quesney. Uh, apologies if I've got that incorrect. Um, which is the novelisation of the 2007 Some Dreams film. I read this as a part of Garb August because this is a novelisation. And um, I'm also going to, this is also going to be a review of the 2007 film as well. And now for the uh, synopsis. I am going to sort of give you a rough outline or it'll cover both the film and the uh, book because they follow the same uh, plot with a few differences which I'll explain later on. Uh, the story begins with Annabelle Fritton uh, who was at uh, Cheltenham Ladies College but was being um, heavily bullied by a girl called Verity Thwaites uh, being sent by her father Carnaby Fritton to um, St Trinian's, a school run by her aunt uh, Camilla Fritton. Uh, her aunt and her father are twins, and they are they are identical twins. Uh, keep um. a, put a pin in that because it'll, I'll explain that why that why I mention that later. Uh, Annabelle gets sort of introduced to the uh, anarchic and very strange nature of the school, um, which includes her being uh, being pranked in the shower and that being a live streamed on YouTube. Uh, she also gets introduced to the various sort of cliques in the school, being the Chavs, um, Posh Tossy, and the Emos, and um, the Nerds. I'm not sure what they're, I forgot what they're actually called, but they're effectively Nerds. They, uh, they for example, uh, each of these groups have their own sidelines, so the Chavs are selling knockoff handbags, uh, the Posh Tossy are running a sex phone line, and uh, the Nerds are running. Um, are, are effectively uh, trading stocks and also there's a sideline in producing um, alcohol in particular uh, two first year twins was the uh, who are the schools are coming to the Sopranos who are creating um, a line of vodka which what which at one point we discover sent some people blind and killed one woman <laughs> um, and uh, and then Annabelle get uh, Annabelle sort of has horrified by this as she tries to escape the school um, to get her father to pick her up, but he he um, pretends when he calls her that the line's breaking up, and out of frustration she uses a hockey stick to fling us to hit her, um, her phone off, and she accidentally destroys a bust of her grandmother. This is caught by the uh, game's ma mistress, Miss Cleaver, who immediately um, drafts her into the hockey team. Uh, then uh, Cheltenham's Lady College arrives. And um, uh, <coughs> my apologies. Uh, to play some trains, including Verity Thwaites. They're also uh, joining them on the same day as the hockey match is the new Minister for Education, Geoffrey Thwaites, uh, Verity's father, who has uh, just been transferred from prisons, prisons minister, and he is determined to turn the education system around, uh, starting with some trains, which is the worst school, uh, to the degree that the um, the school inspectors who have visited uh, St Trinian's uh, have come away with Vietnam style flashbacks and PTSD. PTSD. Um, here, uh, the match, uh, as the match is being played and St Trinian's eventually wins, um, despite, uh, so we say, underhand tactics by both sides, uh, Jesse Thwaites tries to uh, go, secretly get inside the school and sees all sorts of uh, goings on, which he's horrified by. Uh, and he, at one stage, uh, runs into what uh, he tastes some of the alcohol that they've been making, which sends him a bit funny because of his strength. And uh, he then staggers um, through the school and ends up uh, in the the in the um, the wardrobe of the posh totty via a what looks like a jungle room and gets uh, attacked by ants. Uh, and then when the posh shot is him, he ends up thrown out to the uh, out to the this on the I think second or third floor and ends up in a um, a, a water feature. Uh, then the then the school celebrates uh, this victory, and the next morning a bank manager arrives and tells them they're you know half a million I think it's half a million pounds worth of debt, and if they don't pay it, the bank's going to take up the school. At which point Carnaby arrives and tells them he will buy the school as long as he's allowed to turn it into a boutique. Uh, Miss Fritton and the um, students are horrified by this, but 
uh, they come up with a plan which is to steal uh, Vermeer's Go with a Pearl Earring from the National Gallery, but they don't know why. However, they get a piece of luck because the newly arrived English teacher, Miss Dickinson, who is not a, is a very sort of normal teacher, has been trying to get the girls to take part in a university style, um, university challenge style series uh, with schools competing against each other called School Challenge. And she mentions to them that the finale of the school of School Challenge will take place in the National Gallery. So the girls then proceed to uh, get the school uh, signed up for School Challenge and use various tactics to get to the finale. Uh, then they get to the finale and um, Ah, sorry, sorry, before we before we get to that point, before they get to the finale, I should say that Jesse Thwaites makes another visit to uh, uh, St Trillian's and he uh, do expose them. However, in the process, however, they have some warning, uh, they see him coming, the students, and so the school turns itself around and when he brings, when he comes in with all the press, uh, everything is seen in, it's, it's, it looks like a perfectly normal school. Um, and then it ends with Thwaites uh, getting into a complete getting into scandal because Mitch Frit he Miss Fritton's dog uh, decides to try to hump his leg and he kicks it and it goes through the window and lands in in the uh, in the rotation rotation bit of a of the large of a sort of old fashioned large um, lawn mowers and gets killed and so uh, this leads to Thwaites being called uh, Thwaites being plastered across the front page of the newspapers is. Minister kills dog. Now back to the school challenge. They get to the, the finale, and it is against uh, um. Cheltenham's Ladies College. And so Thwaites and his daughter are both there. Uh, the students, through through uh, a series of um, Mission Impossible style um, uh, activities, get into the National Gallery through the sewers and pass a set of um, uh, lasers, and they get the uh, the painting act. However, but as this goes on, both uh, both Verity Thwaite both Verity Thwait and Jeffrey Thwait work out sort of work out something going on, and they are eventually stopped. Um, Annabelle stops Verity by hitting a uh, walkie-talkie at her with a uh, with a hockey stick, and Miss Fritton um, drugs Jeffrey Thwaites um, with a from a flask of scotch to drink. I should say that. Um, Thwait, Jesse Thwaites and Miss Fritton now uh, were at university together and they were clearly involved and they were clearly still attracted to each other. Um, then the uh, then the St. Dreams wins the, um, the finale and they get the painting out. And <coughs> the painting is then, then when St. Dreams put the paint, then St. Dreams set things up so they can find the painting, they return to the National Gallery, and the National Gallery provides them with a reward of uh, of the money they need, the half a million pounds. Also there's a subplot, subplot where um, they set up, they sort of set up Carnaby um, Fritton to be made a fool, so they get to make a copy of the, pearl, the girl with pearl earring, earring and then send the sort of school spirit, Flash Harry, uh, pretending to be a a um, very uh, a reclusive German art dealer into selling it, and they he do sell him to sell the money, so he for a considerable amount of money. And as when Flash Harry is gone, Carnaby notices in the picture that notices the picture side, Camilla Fritten and faints in horror, and that's where the uh, the story ends. Now. As I say, I really enjoyed this book. I really enjoyed the film. Um, the book is slightly different from the film, where some of the plots, the things that happen in this, the film, are sort of take place in the book at the same time. So, for example, when uh, Carnaby Fritton and Annabelle arrive, uh, Anna, when Carnaby Fritton leaves, when he drops off Annabelle, uh, Miss Dickinson is walking up the lawn and gets um, covered in, gets soaked wet by rainwater, uh, by a puddle. Whereas in the book, whereas in the film, she arrives a bit later, and the one or two other things which about. However, they actually improved this. Um, I, I, that's not, um, I think I really enjoy the film, but this sort of improves it as well. Um, the book gets a lot more. I think uh, the book sort of pads stuff in, which um, is really entertaining. Um, so some of the descriptions of what's going on with the girls 
he sort of added to, like um, at the beginning, there's one, as with uh, a couple of <laughs> students, with one of the teachers having to put another teacher in a straight jacket and dragging them out of the way uh, when Annabelle Fritton arrives. Um, in the film, when they arrive, the first sign of things that St. Dream is not being quite normal is a uh, disc falling. Um, they, they, they just head to the, uh, the entrance hall at the school, and just outside, a disc drops uh, with a resounding smash on the drive. Um, it's I, I really enjoy it. It's very very funny. It it, it, it very much is in, if you it's very much in line with the film's comedy. A very much slapstick, so some black comedy as well. And so for example, whenever in in one of the things that goes on with the girls is that they um, are doing various things to each other. So um, at one stage in one bit of the film, uh, there's a girl being dragged across. Two girls, are, I think it's two girls are riding a. Uh, Matthew Ferguson tractor, and they're dragging another girl who's tied up by a piece of rope behind them as they do it. Yeah. And then there's the uh, the, the school uh, the games mistress Miss Cleaver, is ex army, and she set up um, a stress relief uh, scheme for the girls, which is to use firearms and start shooting at targets, which are ducks. Except the ducks are on top of, uh, are affixed to hats with um, which the girl which other pupils are wearing as then they're moving across the range like across like that and being shot at which is yeah. and that sort of sets the tone for it it really is entertaining there's also one or two references here to both Colin Firth and Rupert Everett's um, uh, background so there's a for example one of the first films that Rupert Everett um, and Colin Firth have appeared in was uh, a film called uh, another country was based on a play inspired by the life of the uh, Cambridge spy guy Burgess, and there's a reference to another country in the, in the, both the, the book and the films. So it's the same piece of dialogue, and there's also a reference in the film to Colin Firth's very famous um, role as Mr. Darcy in the BBC adaptation of the 1990s, uh, the, the wet shirt scene. If you know, if you've ever seen that, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, also, there's interesting uh, also references that I'd subsequently discovered. Uh, to the, the to the schools of the students, uh, to the schools of the some of the actors went to. So, one of the colleges that um, I can't remember which one it was. There's a number of a couple of actors in here went to the schools that um, the students got that St Trinian's goes up against in school challenge. So very interesting. Um, now. And I, I, again, I will recommend this and the film. The film's really entertaining, so um, you can actually—I can actually give you some idea of what the film's like because you, um, this book, it, as a novelization, what like novelization used to do, actually have, fil have um, film uh, still from the film. So here we have Annabelle Fritton and her aunt uh, Camille. So as you can see, that's uh, Talila Riley, and that's Rupert Everett. He's one of two roles in this film. Uh, then we have the next one. The um, students cheering on at the match, and then we have the match there. And I'm not sure if you can see that's Gemma Arterton playing Kelly. That's Catherine Drysdale, who, if you're about my age, you'll probably most remember her for uh, I've forgotten her name now. She's in Point of Logs and Two Packets of Crisps. She, although if you if you watch Bridgerton, you'll probably know her as playing. Um, I believe she plays a French dressmaker in Bridgerton. Uh, that's Paloma Faith, I'm not sure if that's clear, who you more likely know as a singer. But she has done some film roles. She was in that um adaptation she was in that um oh, I've forgotten the name now. Uh, you know, Alfred Penny the Pennyworth um T V series where she played um one of the villains and then Tilly Riley again as Andrew Fritton. Then we have Ah, Russell Brand playing Flash Harry. And again, that's the that's the planning that they were planning for the heist. And then we have here in the final, well, the final two. This is the uh, two twins, the two first year twins who were uh, are the who are the school's equivalent to the Sopranos, or who are testing the explosives to um, <coughs> that they're going to use to blow the way into the blow the way through a. Uh, uh, a grating in the uh, sewer to get into the National Gallery. 
which has the line of when they bl they blow this shit up, just as this is when Thwaite is coming to do his expose, and they blow it up, and this this the girl the sister here with the uh, with the binoculars turns to her sister and says, "You were only supposed to blow the bloody doors off," which is of course a reference to the Italian job, and then this is the finale from uh, school. School change. I should reference that Stephen Fry is in the film playing himself. And then uh, the last one is ah, as they're doing the heist itself. So that pretty much gives you an idea. And, and if you look on the other front, that again is a good representation of what the films like and the book. Now, I can recommend both of those. I will leave in the description a list of the soundtrack of the film which I highly recommend, which one reason why I enjoy the film so much is because I, this came out in 2007, so I would have been six, about 15, 16 years old, and the music in it is the sort of music I was listening to then, so it's really, I really like it because of the soundtrack. Now, I just want to, before I, that's sort of the end of the review, I just want to reference you know, about St. Trinian's more broadly, because that film and the novelisation are... Well, I think it might be the sixth or I think it might be the seventh film in the series. It's a series that started back in the 1950s, where uh, and one thing that I didn't mention, sorry, in the film is that uh, Rupert Everett plays obviously Camilla uh, Fritton, but also he plays um, Carnaby Fritton. That's why when I mentioned them being uh, twins, and in the original film, which I think is called The Bells of St. Trinians. Uh, the great late late great Alistair Sim plays the twin roles of Miss Fritton and her brother, and that's a um, uh, and also in that film uh, Flash Harry is played by the late great um, George Cole, and they're very entertaining films. They're very much in the same anarchic anarchic style. Um, now, the films are actually based on uh, those films. Are very, I recommend those films. Um, if I if they're free on YouTube, I will. Uh, leave a link to them down below. I'll see if I can find, uh, see if there's a link to a free version of it on uh, YouTube, this one on YouTube as well. But um, the films, uh, both these films are based on cartoons by Ronald Searle. This is a collection of, car of, of um, Ronald Searle's cartoons, which in, not of some trainings, some some trainings, but some other stuff. And this is, uh, in the film, they actually do a sort of they had some cartoons that are reminiscent of this sort of thing, um, particularly when they're doing the, um, the sort of the, the planning for getting into the National Gallery, the sort of to, to steal the painting. They have sort they were sort of animated schematic in this style of this, reminiscent of this, and it's so it's a callback to Sills cartoons. And this very much gives you the idea of the Centrinians altogether of the girls, uh, what they're like. And there's one of Jaws I want to show you in here. There's, um, let's find this one. Oh, this one. There we go. So you have um, this one here of the girls firing a machine gun, and the teacher says, Good grief, a little less noise, please. Oh, sorry. Girls, girls, a little less grief, a little less noise, please. Firing a, what looks like a, uh, a Vickers machine gun, which would cause a hell of a lot of noise if you find it. And then, um, oh, then there's that one, of course. Uh, the girls are just from the teacher, and it says, Okay, that's okay. Well, that's okay. Now for old stinks. And then uh, we have another one that we just do. Where is it? And then you have this one of one of the students. It goes, Angela Menace. With her battle lights in her eyes, very much. Uh, I think this is sort of very much one of the things that inspires Posh Totty. So just there's a thing. I'll, I will take some pictures of these and put them up on a, a community post as well. And then there's a. <laughs> this is one uh, for um, Guy Fawkes. So you've got. Uh, Teach you got what is presumably a teacher there, and then the uh, dialogue down the bottom says, Show you that, but dialogue down the bottom says, Bash her again. I think she moved. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very much, um, very much an, an anarchic, um, anarchic sort of parody of what this one, and this is one. 
the, the dialogue goes, but Miss Merriweather, you said we could bring our pets with us, back, back with us. And then she's got a uh, python. <laughs> Oh, there's an, here's another one. Just do this one. It goes. The the one on this one goes smashing. Now pass the bat's blood. And it has um let's do this. So yeah, it's a bit, I, and I'd recommend trying to get hold of this book because it's it's really good. It's got it's, it's got a couple of Centrinians ones in, but it's got some of the some of the other ones that Ron Russell did over his career. Which are well worth a look. But overall, I, I but just to go back to the novelisation of the film, um, I'd recommend buying this if you're going and reading it. Really enjoyable. Uh, I would say though, if you're going to read this, watch the film first because you might get a bit confused by uh, who's who, because the, the 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 book is written in a way that it assumes that you have seen the film, and uh, part of it, um, and so. It doesn't give you too much uh, description of the characters. Um, but if you have seen the film, you don't need that because you can when you when the the characters are speaking, you can hear it in the voices of the actors. The way that you can hear the actors' voices. So um, it's well worth a read, especially if you've seen the film. And with that, Bob Tube, I'll say goodbye and see you later.